الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله الصبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Qur'an that I have just recited to you, this is the ayah of the Qur'an that we have been going through from the last a month and a half or a couple months. And again, for those people who are here for the first time, the translation of the ayah goes like this, that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who has the better way than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a believers, we say, نَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ Indeed, we are submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this theme, we started from Surah Al-Fatiha and we are going over the ayahs of the Qur'an from the beginning of the Qur'an which talks about the things and the qualities that the believer should have and the things and the qualities that the believer should not have. So we are skipping through a lot of ayahs and then we are picking some ayahs. In this journey, we came all the way in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 155 and that will be the starting point of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests humans when they arrive in this world and they stay in this world. And all of these tests are part of life. When we go through these tests, that's exactly how we are judged on the day of judgment. Not here, on the day of judgment, that how we did in the challenges that we had individually in this life. Everybody has different challenges. Nobody has the same set of challenges. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, sometimes we will test you with khawf, fear. Sometimes we will test you with hunger. Sometimes we will test you by decreasing you in wealth. Sometimes we are going to test you in your souls, by yourself. Sometimes we will test you in the blessings that we have given you. And these tests are there, everybody has it. Sometimes they are temporary, sometimes they are long term, sometimes they stay with us forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and those who steadfast, when they are hit by these calamities of life, please give good tidings, O Prophet, to those people, that for these people, there is a big reward on the Day of Judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when tests a believer, each and every second that the believer goes through the test, he gets reward. Anytime a believer raises his hands and says dua, it could be one of the three things. Number one could happen right now. Number two could happen in the future. Number three could be given as good points on the Day of Judgment. When we all will going to need more and more points. Because in the Jannah, there will be one feeling that everybody will have. And that will be, I wish I would have done more. Then I would have been there. I would not have been here at this level. So on the Day of Judgment, even if the good tidings are there, the deeds are there, and a person is going in Jannah, still there's a wish of going further, going to a higher place in Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 156, which is the next one, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ Whenever these people are struck with anything that hurts them, it doesn't have to be a loss of somebody. It could be anything, anything and everything that is hurtful. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مَصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا They say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Whatever has been gone and taken away was never mine. Was given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how much it had to stay with me. And now it is going away. So since it was not mine, 
It was given to me by His blessing to enjoy. No, it is by His will is going away. So it was never by my will that I got it. So what is the point of crying over it when it was never mine? And each and everything that is part of me and part of you is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eyes, ears, nose. Now think about it, this time of the year when people get sick, the nose gets clogged, you have a hard time breathing, throats, ears, little things, they're all connected. Now when I'm teaching this kid who's blind, can't see, has never seen, and when we have to talk about colors in class, I can't even imagine what he goes through. So when we talk about different things that are visual, when I see him when he places things on the screen, he stacks them up. I'm like, subhanAllah, how much we are ungrateful for the things that Allah has given to us and we take them for granted. And on top of that, we use those things to sin. That's the worst that we can do. First of all, being unthankful and then on top of that, sinning using those things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given those things to us and we should be thankful for those things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah, which is coming forward, that وَمِنَ nas and from the people, مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ who take مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا take help from those other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُحِبُّونَهُمْ they love them كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ that they should have loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their priorities in life are different. Instead of establishing connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they try to establish connections elsewhere. And they want to try to find peace. As a result, what happens? We see famous comedians who spend their entire life trying to make sure that people around them laugh. In person and also on screen. And if you look at their personal life, they are on depression drugs. They are going through emotional imbalances in life. Because they are missing the connection. This happiness has to start from the heart. A sad heart and a smile, they don't get along well pretty long. So it has to be the heart that should be at peace. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ It is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brings peace to your heart. So that remembrance must bring peace in our heart. That connection should bring love in our heart. Not hatred, not anger, not animosity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ummah, Send the Prophet of Mercy who called himself Ana Nabiyu Rahma. I am the Prophet of Mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced him in the Quran and said, Wama arsalaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. We have sent you the blessing for everybody. And we have given you the highest moral values that anybody could attain. Among all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of the best creation is our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there are people who love others the way Allah should be loved. And walladina amanu and those who have believed, Ashaddu Habbalillah. Their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unmeasurable. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word ashaddu. You can't quantify ashaddu. In Urdu language, coming from Persian, there is a word that we use called ishq, which is basically to show the height of love that resides in the heart of an individual. That you will find a lot in the Persian and Urdu writings. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that phenomena. أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Then there is no limit to that love. And then people get involved in that love so much that I was reading about the story of one of the governor that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu sent out. 
He was a companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His name was Saeed bin Amir. He came to advise Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu told him that we recently conquered the city of Humus and I want you to go and take charge at Humus. He said, Astaghfirullah ya Umar, this is fitna. Taking charge of a city and governing it and commanding it, it's a responsibility. And Umar said, you guys have put me in the state of caliphate and you don't even want to help out? You have to go. He said, okay. If you force me to, I'll go. So when he was leaving, Omar said, why shouldn't we give you some kind of a salary? Subhanallah. These are the things that we talked about beforehand. And he said, Ya Omar, I'm the companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the state treasury, we all the companions anyway every month get stipends. That stipend is more than my need. On top of that, should I overburden the treasury with my salary? No, I'm okay. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is how people love when they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll tell you his state as a governor, then we're going to move on. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu happened to run into some people who came from Humus. And he asked him, compile a list of poor people in Humus. And they compiled a list of the poor people in Humus. And in that list there was a name of Sa'id ibn Amir. And he said, who is this Sa'id ibn Amir? And the people said, the same guy that you put in charge for us. He said, how come is he poor? Uh, we give him stipends every month. He said, because he spends so much on the poor. Subhanallah. Now these are the governors of the provinces we're talking about. Why? Because ashat tuhubba lillah. They were trenched in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These feelings and emotions come from heart. You can't force them it on you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps these people out. Then Umar said, I ordered to send 1,000 coins. And when a guy reached Sayyid ibn Amr's house, and he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. His wife said, Yes, Sayyid, what happened? Did the caliph pass away? He said, No, 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 something bigger happened. He said, Did the Muslims got hit by a calamity? He said, No, 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 something bigger has happened. And she said, what is it? He said, forget about what is it. Will you help me get rid of it? She said, yes, I'm your wife. We have to work on it together. We're a family. He said, yes, let's spend this back on the poor people. So he took 1,000 coins and they together spent it and gave it out to the poor people. So this is accumulation of wealth and spending of the wealth these two things we try to balance in our lives. But again, when you hear these kind of stories, you're like, subhanAllah, how did you do that? Ashaddu habba lillah. Because they love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not quantifiable by you and I. For us, we think about giving. For them, they never thought about giving. They just kept giving and they never thought about holding it on to. So anyway, Ashaddu hubba lillah has many angles. We as individuals have to see where does Ashaddu hubba lillah is with us. Where do we stand in that love as individuals? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 168 of Surah Al-Baqarah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, kulu eat mimma fil ardi halalan tayyibah. Eat from this planet earth, whatever we have made halal for you, and on top of that purified for you. So that even if you're eating, eating a halal food, it had to be in a certain fashion, it had to be cooked, for example. So cleanliness is everywhere in this faith, from outside to inside to eating. That's the beauty of Islam, that cleanliness is very important. So sometimes, as individuals, we make mistakes. 
For example, some people would walk with the barefoot all the way to the kitchen and come back with the barefoot back again in the masjid. Now this is not clean outside. You are walking with that same foot back and forth between the tiles and the carpet. This is not clean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us some wisdom to use. So those are little things to clean after us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from the earth eat halal and tayyibah and always be careful. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ shaytan. Do not ever fall in the traps of the shaytan. Why? إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ He is your open enemy. He declared his openness on the day when Adam السلام, was put forth and everybody was asked to bow down to him. He clearly said, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I will go forward and I will going to make sure that all of them lose their path. And I'm going to take as many as possible with me on the day of judgment into the hellfire. So on the day of judgment, the Quran says when people will blame him, he said, no, 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 don't blame me. وَلَا تَلُومُونِي تَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Blame yourselves. I only ask you to do sin. I never forced you to do sin. So, تَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And also on the day of Badr, he ran away, he said, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ I am scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has a very, very severe punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be careful of this guy because he's weak. Shaitan is weak. Quran says that his traps are weak. When he overcomes you is when you are weaker. If you're stronger, then he has hard time. He himself says, إِلَّا عِبَادِكَ الْمُخْلَصِينَ I will take those people with me in the hellfire, but those who are purely yours, I would have no control over them. So the idea is to become pure. The pure at heart. The pure, the purity. Inside out, same individual. Don't live two lives. That's another problem. We live two lives. A lot of us do. And anytime we do an action, look at your heart. If your heart is hardened by it, that means you are not doing something right. Your heart has to go along with you. So work on your heart is very important. When you stand in prayers and your heart is hard, that means it needs to be worked out on. It needs to be softened. It needs to be humbled. It needs to be submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we raise our hands and say Allahu Akbar that should change the way this body behaves the heart moves that is why the people before us like the son of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu his name was Ali commonly known by Zainul Abideen after doing wudu he would shake and people will ask him, why are you shaking? He said, don't you know who in front of whom I have to go and stand now? This is the state that they would put themselves in. Because, ashaddu hubba lillah. They clearly felt it where they are going, stepping forward to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us blessings. And we have to be thankful for those blessings. And be careful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah says, إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ He only orders you, who shaitan, to do evil and immoralities. Immoralities. See, if you do more of them, you will heart your heart. وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And he forces you in a way because he puts waswasa in your heart, but you act upon that waswasa, and then you do things without knowledge. You'll find so many people out there in the social gatherings who are speaking out of knowledge. And then on top of that, they force you to side with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be careful. Be careful. 
He comes in different ways. What is halal? He's already told to you what's halal. What is haram? But he's already been told to you what is haram. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْثَةِ وَالْدَّمَةِ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْذِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ It has been made haram for you to eat the dead, to eat uh, the, the blood and the uh, pro- products, byproducts of pork and anything that has been slaughtered in somebody else's name but the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if it's the halal animal. فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ But whoever is forced so that's a different deal. But when you are not forced, then you probably have certain rules and guidelines to live your life with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us blessings and we should be thankful for those blessings. Inshallah ta'ala we will continue this journey again next time with ayah 177 which is a much longer ayah so that's why I'm going to move it up for the next time. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم